Hey guys, what's up? It's me, the Cuban Bear, and today I'm giving you guys a tutorial on what contours are and how to actually use it on multiple big cubes. Um, yeah, a slight thing that I wanted to say was that I know that I say contours throughout this whole video, but they're actually called commutators, so I'm very sorry, uh, my brain was just wrong the whole time. They're called com commutators, not contours. You're going to hear that throughout the whole video, so when I say contours, I mean commutators, so sorry about that. So, I mentioned in a lot of my tutorials from 4x4 to 9x9 that the, you, the one of the last step one of the last steps you have to do in the last centers for any big cube is contours and contouring now what that means essentially is um you take a piece and you perform uh this special algorithm that is going to swap that piece only with this piece and you can see that this piece and this piece are swapped together and everything else in the cube is solved this is essentially what a contour is doing making sure that these pieces go in there so in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to do it with any big cube and the most reasonable one i did show you guys on was on the seven by seven to give you guys sort of an example of what to do i'm giving you guys this piece right here this piece needs to be swapped out with this piece and we're going to be using the contour method to do it so here's how you do it you start off with the piece you want to get so this is the piece i want to switch with this one so i'm going to line them up together so that they're parallel on the same side so this piece and this piece are on the same sort of line right there next what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring it down to that piece you can either bring it up or you can bring it down i like to put it down more better since it's more better for me to actually know what i'm doing here now Depending on what side you put it down on, you're gonna you're gonna do an F move opposite to the direction that whatever this is on. So because this is on the right side, that means that I'm gonna do my F in this direction, not in this direction. And the reason for that is I'll show you. If I do the F in this direction the wrong way, and I continue the algorithm, it completely messes everything up. You wanna go the other direction so that you have all of this other space right here to move around the pieces, not this space, because it's already been used once. So in doing contours, you can't use the same piece twice. And the reason for that is because you're gonna cause this to go even more in that direction, which is an area we don't wanna mess with. We only wanna mess with the center. We only wanna mess with the pieces in this side and this side only. No other side should be involved in this, only these two. And that's how we only move once. And to prevent us from using other pieces, we go opposite direction of where the contour is so here we are again with this piece right here needing to go right here down so we're going to move that piece down and since we moved it on this side we're going to go f in this direction now what you're going to do is you since this is the piece we want to get rid of we're going to replace it with this piece up here now the reason for this is because you see this bar right here that we've made that we ruined when we move this back and we move this back up we fix the bar and the only thing left to do is to arrange it back together into that. That's essentially what a contour is. It's basically making one of the pieces go away to rearrange it and then putting it back and forcing it to go into another piece. So you're forcing one piece to go in another place. That way it fixes itself when you're done with the algorithm. And that's what's so great about contours is that you can do this multiple times over and more advanced applications. So let me show you another example, and this time using two at once. Okay, so right here we can see that we have a contour with two sides this time, and we wanna pair it up with this one right here. Now, since both of these are actually um, on the same line, we can actually do it the same way. So of course we move it down, move it in the opposite direction because it was on this side, we move it this way. Now we're on this step where you moved it out of the way. And you're probably wondering, what do we do in this situation? Do we just move one down? No. What you actually do is that you move these two layers down, only these two down, those two down, move this back, move this layer back up, move that back also. And then you get to put those two pieces up at the same time, causing the entire blue and orange side and everything else to be solved. So I said I was going to show you guys how to do this on a 5x5. Five five. So here's my 5x5 five five right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a contour with the orange and the blue side again, showing you how to do it on a 5x5. Five five. 
And so we can see that we have this piece right here needing to go down to this piece. So we're obviously going to move it so that they're together right there. And once we do that, we're going to put them together, as we said before. Now, because this is on the middle side, you can actually move it anywhere you want. It will not affect it. It will only work if it's on this side or this side. Then you would have to change the direction. But because it's in the middle, we can pick whatever direction we want. I'll pick this side. Go right there. Move another orange piece down. You make a little T. You move this back. You pull this back up again. You move this back and you solve for it. And that solves a contour right there. So the basic idea I'm trying to get with contours and how to actually work with them is that they only involve moving small pieces. Now let me explain a little bit more in depth on what it means. What do you do when the F and the F prime go like this? Look, when I move this down right here, you're probably wondering what happens when I move this. How do I know when to go this way or when to go that way? It's very simple and it works on all the layers. On a seven by seven or six by six, just follow the same principle. If, if you had to use your left hand to move that piece down, or if it's your left hand that's rotating, then you're gonna move it an F prime. If I used my right hand to do it, on this side, then it's going to go F. So just knowing that basic principle is going to help you determining whether or not, and if it's in the middle, you can go either F or F prime because you will have, you have two available spaces to you. Whereas if you went this way, you can't go this way because this is already compromised, but you can go this way because this side is not compromised. You see up here. So that's basically how to do contours. I'll show you how to do it on a six by six and on an eight by eight, just so that you guys don't get confused. It's a good thing I'm doing an even layered puzzle because in this case, there is no center in the middle. So in this case, you're probably wondering, what do we do in this situation? And it's very simple. What you would do is you would put it right there and you would put this down there. And in this case, you can see that if I do this, then it will actually damage and it won't actually make sense. So in this situation, we're gonna apply the same situation where we did it on the right side because it's on the right side. We're gonna go to the left that way. So an F, we're gonna move this orange down, move this back, move this back also. And then we basically do an F again and we put it back up and that solves the contour. And that basically works for anything. Here we are again with a, here we are again with the eight by eight itself, trying to locate it and putting it in the right place. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it over to the like that. Now you can see that this is an also an even layer puzzle. So because this is on the right side of this place, I'm using my right hand, you can see. We're gonna do an F and we're gonna move this blue side down also. Move it that way, move it that way. Move that back right there like that. And that's how to do it on an eight by eight. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. I know I've been lagging on the queuing videos lately, but I'm getting back up on them. I decided to do a lot more tutorials in this. Next episode or next video is gonna be me answering all your questions that you had on my most popular video, which is how to solve a seven by seven. I'm pretty much answering all the questions that you had in the comment section, but actually performing them on a video that way it's more presentable and people can actually, you know, learn from it as well. So I don't have to be asked constantly these things. But yeah, guys, be sure to look out for that video. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a like, make sure to hit